our special meeting and the confusion around it. And I would ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Member Agna? Yes, present. Member Miller? Member Miller? I see. Yes. You. Member Davis? Present. Member Levy? I see you, so I'll accept that. Member Robbins? Yes. And Member Seraphie Cox? Present. Yeah, so again, so we have to sort of decide since this is a kind of non-existent and we don't have a chair. Um, I guess if Gwen, you're going to be the chair of the meeting. I'm happy to since okay. I tried right. to make it happen, um, okay. and have been designated as the chair of this the search process by the mayor. So I will convene this meeting, and I will first begin by apologizing again and again for the confusion around it. Um, hopefully we will get this straight and understand how we can proceed with a meeting to do the search separate from necessarily having a full school committee meeting. But I was advised by the mayor and Layla Taylor that we needed to post this and have it posted as a school committee meeting because we don't have an official com committee yet for our search committee. Um, I would like to say that in interest of brevity for those who have come voluntarily to make us have a quorum and also for our own committee of whatever, the people who have volunteered to be a part of the search process, that we will keep this to an hour and we will look at agenda item number one. And if there is time, we will talk about agenda item number two and how we proceed with that. I will have to ask for some guidance on that since having a public meeting and talking about people's names doesn't feel like something that we can do at this point. So I'm going to share my screen, if I may. Let's see, share screen. So I can talk through, oops, my notes that I took in meeting with the MASC representative, Liz LaFond, who is going to be guiding our search. Um, this meeting was on Monday, December 12th. The mayor was there, I was there, and Annie Thompson was there. Liz, we did it on Zoom, and she would like, Liz would like to meet with the preliminary search committee as necessary, and that's what we were calling ourselves, the preliminary search committee but we haven't done that officially. So she is okay that I would pass along what she said at that meeting on Monday, and then we can determine how we're going to proceed. Um, as I said in the notes, I will talk these through at our meeting on Thursday. Um, and I will just go bullet by bullet. And I'd ask that if you have questions along the way, please just raise your hand. And Annie, if you could call on people, because I'm not sure I will always see those. Okay. Um, first of all, Liz assured us that a posting after the first of the year is fine and that we would need to keep it up for a month, definitely. We would use the MASC posting and our website for advertising, and we would not use SchoolSpring. Member Agna, do you know, uh, Member Levy has her hand up. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. So when we chose MASC over the national... Uh, search firms that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we were assured by MASC was that this would be a national search. Uh -huh. And I guess I am wondering how we can think about where we post in a more intentional way so that we are not just reaching Massachusetts, current Massachusetts superintendents, but so that we are reaching a national pool and so that there's especially an eyes toward sourcing uh, candidates that would help diversify our pool. So I'd like to clarify what my notes are and that I meant to use MASC as the guidance, but not just to have it posted there. And because my notes are not well organized, I did, if you go down one, two, three, four bullets, the MASC will post on its website and we'll do a direct mailing electronically to Influence 100, which is a new 
administrative cadre through the de through DESI. They will do the national superintendent search forum. They will do colleges and universities, and they will do sister organizations in the Northeast region. Um, so, you know, if that isn't suffice, I think that would be some feedback I could give to Liz LaFond, but for me, it stood out that there was National Superintendent Search Forum that would be a yeah, part of advertising. Yeah, thank you. Sorry to not have read further before asking. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess it would be a question I would want to ask her, though, okay. to make it clear to her that we really do want to have a national uh, focus mm -hmm. and to ensure also that where we are posting intentionally I mean, I think there are likely, I don't know, in most in most fields, there are sites and places that folks can post in order to reach a more diverse group of uh, potential candidates. And I'm just, my question would be in searching for superintendents who bring diverse backgrounds and identities, where should we be searching and posting? And um, I would I would hope she could help answer that. And both Member Miller and Member Robbins have their hands up too. Okay, Member Miller. I just want to echo that, but also I would say specifically um, reaching out to colleges and universities that, in particular. Um, reach a more diverse uh, group of students. Um, in particular, there are colleges and universities that are for African-American students that I would want them in particular to get reached out to so that we, um, that we absolutely ensure that we have reached the most diverse population possible. And that would, to me, have to occur nationally and in um, all states, not just the Northeast or New England. Sorry, I'll, I'll correct this. Hey, Member Robbins. And I'm not going to interrupt your explanation of your notes, but I am wondering, I don't know if you had a chance to read what I sent about the Dartmouth search process this morning. It was in the MASC forums. Yep. So they their MASC representative met with the entire school committee <clears throat> and laid out the whole process for them and had a very concrete, they didn't really rely on a member of the school committee to have to come and present and make sense of and take questions because they were really present for it. And it was really clear. I thought the process was um, in, in my own searching for the different um, agencies that have worked with school committees about superintendent searches. Um, I was pretty impressed with what Worcester did, but they used a different company. I think they used HYA. And this particular search has started in Dartmouth and it was so clear and it was so comprehensive that I, guess I wonder why we have not had that experience at the beginning with Liz. And one of the things that they cited was that they actually did their reach out for <clears throat> as preliminary for a screening committee from the community much farther on in the process. And I'm, I'm happy to hold on that question until you get through explaining what you're doing, but I, I, wanna, I just wanted to make sure that we were sharing that. I don't know if other folks had a, read, a chance to read that as well. Well, okay, Member Davis. I'll, I'll just real quick, just in response to that, <clears throat> Member Robbins, I wonder um, if perhaps once we officially start after the first of the year, which it sounds like that's when we kick off with MASC or something like that, maybe that's when they would come and speak with all of us because when Member Miller and Member Gazy and I did all of our calling around to those other national firms and stuff. They uniformly said it's some combination of talking to the people on the school committee and interviewing people. So I guess I agree that I would hope for that and maybe it's just in January. 
Yeah, I, I would answer it now. I think that it's very fair to say that. And I don't think that there's any problem with um, making that part of our process. I, I think that they would be willing to. I, you know, I think in my notes, it was just sort of that Liz thought right now she would communicate to us, meaning me, um, what was going to some of the general notes about what would happen, but we can ask her to come to a, a school committee meeting. We may have to have a special meeting again because I'm, I know our agendas are very full and um, I will just check with the uh, others on the agenda setting meeting about what we already have in the queue for January. But clearly this would be a very important thing to do to have the whole committee meet with, with Liz. Just to interject, um, we have the SIPs and something else on the January, um, we have a very full January 12th meeting, uh, including some, you know, kind of the, um, um, I can't think of the word, I'm sorry. It's very just sort of small things, not small things, but housekeeping, housekeeping things like the calendar and that sort of thing that's coming up on January 12th. And also usually in the end of January or the beginning of February, we have the joint city council school committee meeting. So that, so it's gonna be really tight. And I'm not exactly sure what we're doing in terms of the date of the retreat. So I kind of have to keep that in mind, plus a lot of other subcommittees are meeting. So mm -hmm. if, we, if we are going to have Liz come, we probably should schedule it pretty soon before this, the calendar um, fills up. Right. I just I went over the Dartmouth process again that I read this morning that you sent. Thank you, Member Robbins, for sending it. Um, their timeline is the membership of the screening committee should be set by February 13th, and that applications will close on March 2nd. Preliminary interviews on March 6th, and then a new superintendent at the end of April. So I I guess I was reassured by that because I don't know that we are under as much pressure as perhaps we felt we were. Um, I know that there are many districts looking for superintendents. But I, you know, I think that we need to do this very thoughtfully and carefully, and it, including to have MASC meet with everyone to reassure everyone that this is how we want to be going. So just to clarify, um, in response to that, it's not about reassuring that we're doing it. I really think we're paying these folks a lot of money, and I would love to have them be directing the process and be really clear about steps and the times and when we do things. And what we do, because we've done some guessing already about that, um, and it's it's not a good use of our time. And it does seem to me to we're hiring professionals to support us in that. And um, I, I'm not sure why Liz isn't joining us tonight. And I'm not going to hold up this process. I'm, I want us to be able to go through this and get your notes and follow through. Um, but those are concerns of mine. Okay, thank you, Member Miller. I don't want to beat a dead horse. But we already had a subcommittee that uh, where, as uh, Member Davis just said, we already reviewed several different national search companies and came to the conclusion that we would get better and um, less costly uh, guidance from MASK than the other search companies that we thoroughly investigated. So I feel like we are past that. So we have made the we made the choice and recommended to the entire school committee that we use mask. So I think we need maybe the whole school committee needs just to know by email what the process is because there is a very specific process. And we knew what that was, and we knew what the other company's processes were. So we've already done this work. So now that we're going with mask, we need to just move along. Okay, thank you, Member Miller. And I actually thinking about how we're proceeding that possibly instead of having two or three members of our school committee working on this, which actually doesn't work for tonight because we do have more members here and I appreciate the input that the other members are giving, that we do just pause and we have Liz LaFond, who is our representative from MASC, come and meet with the school committee to go through the process. 
Um, and I, I think that would be a good recommendation um, for all who are interested. And then those who are interested in serving on the search committee can proceed with determining that. Can we just go ahead now, please? So um, in the notes also, there is a, a very important piece that she mentioned that was an online survey. She did share a sample of that that she has used in other districts to ask the community, basically I called it hopes and dreams, but really what they are looking for in a superintendent. It was a simple survey. I think it was um, very doable for a wide population. She can have it translated into any languages. I did ask Lauren Barry, which is I'm skipping around in my notes, if there are other languages than English and Spanish. She said there are very few other uh, languages that are home languages, and she gave me a couple of home languages that I will just pass along to Liz. Um, she said that the QR code would be really important here so that people don't have to search for the survey, and um, that is something that they provide when they do the survey so that people don't, you know, it, it's often hard to find surveys, and this is something that they've found success with. Um, she recommended the size of the committee being 11 to 13. Um, after that becomes unwieldy to schedule. People's schedules are hard to match and put together. Um, she recommended two or three members of the school committee on the search committee. We now have quite a few people who are interested in being on the committee, which is wonderful. Public, if you're listening, we thank you all for responding to the article in the Gazette and any of the other ways that we've put out our our interest in having a very wide, diverse group of people coming together. And now we will have to have a conversation that will be challenging to whittle this down into a manageable number so that we can have something that we can um, find common schedules about. I did mention to Liz that what if we did have a larger number? And she said, the basic thing is you need to determine what a quorum for the committee is and proceed if people can't come. Um, composition, she talked it through. I think it's probably something that we would, oh, Dina, uh, member Levy. Thanks. Um, I just noticed there's no name, no mention of students in her composition, suggested composition, but- Oh, that, that was probably my mistake. Okay. So, uh, I would just, cause I know we've had students and thank you, Member Levy for um, recruiting, so. Great, thanks. Um, right, and that for me, I. I've always found that if you just have one member of a quote stakeholder group, it's kind of feels tokenistic. Um, and so I'm hoping that if some way we can figure out that at least two people knowing who they're representing can feel that they're comfortable in that role. Um, that's just an aside that I made as a comment. Um, member Robbins. Thank you. Um, I did hear from a couple of teachers at the link that would have invited them to join the group was dead. I don't know if that's still an issue. Hmm. I, I think there was a deadline on it. So, but you know, we can open it up again. Okay. I think we're, we're really going to have a hard time um, I'm, from the numbers that have responded. I think this is actually prior to that. Okay, I'll check on it. Um, once formed, the committee members are announced in a press release and to the full committee. I suggested we make sure we offer child care and interpretation. Um, Liz LaFond said that Lion Bridge is really good. It's something that I have also used in my work in coaching principals when they don't have anyone who have, has the language spoken in the school. And it really is seamless. I think it's going to be very helpful to us. Um, I, me I mentioned rubrics. She said they can be helpful for those who are used to using them. And uh, she said that she would like to send a simpler one that was developed for Chicopee. 
And I did include that in my mailing to the what I thought was going to be our preliminary group. And I will make sure that when I arrange for Liz to come to the whole committee, that will be available to people. I, I understand where she's coming from in terms of um, the accessibility of rubrics. Those of us who are educators know that we've had to use a lot of rubrics, but we also need to know, be aware of the fact that people aren't used to using rubrics. So we can um, talk about that when we look at the rubrics. Member Levy. Thanks. I just wanna, um... I, I, I think that there's no way we can not use a rubric. I right. think that the, the point of a rubric is to ensure that everybody on the committee and everybody in the public understands what are the criteria that we're searching for. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the reasons why we had some um, issues with our interim superintendent search was that there wasn't clarity and transparency because we didn't have a rubric that we were all using. And I think that um, there can be ways to ensure that everybody on the committee is onboarded into understanding what is in the rubric to making the rubric very clear in terms of what the criteria are and defining those criteria, and also making it very clear what the um, what the rating scale is or, or how we are going to assess candidates so that there could be like a, a real discussion amongst the committee about the rubric. But I also think that we can't just use a blanket rubric. We've got to base our design of our rubric on the survey results that come in based on what the community is saying they want in a superintendent. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we can really design our rubric until we've got those results. All right, absolutely agree. So those are the steps that we need to take um, in order to have a, a good rubric available. Um, she mentioned that we can have any kind of preliminary meetings on Zoom, but always have in-person interviews. I'm sure that there's some way of adapting for those people who have whatever reasoning that they have for not being in person, but I think that's what we have to have as a goal. Um, MASC does an initial screening. That's part of their service. And they. she was very transparent about saying they just go through to make sure everyone's licensed. There are sometimes people that they have knowledge of, and if they haven't been able to provide some kind of screening, then it ends up delaying the process more. Um, that is also why she said school spring is not the place to put it, that it is something that um, has to be done very separately. And because school spring is sort of open season on all kinds of applicants, and this is very concentrated on a superintendent search. Um, Member Levy? Sorry. That's uh, okay. No, that's what we're doing here tonight. Um, is there a way to make it clear that we care about racial diversity and all forms of diversity and that when we get the best pool, that it's got to be a diverse pool that, and, and to ask them to be able to track the demographics of the of the candidates who are applying. I think, again, an external search firm would have asked, obviously in a optional way for candidates to um, self-report uh, different identifiers, but uh, always with the option to choose not to disclose. I'm just hopeful that MASC can do that as well so that we can have a sense of the demography of the pool and so that we know that if we have the best pool, it's not a best pool if it's not also a diverse pool. Great, thank you. Um, the last line is really what she was saying as a human being. And I think she was acknowledging that She's had some issues herself in her life, and she just wants to make sure that everybody has grace, respect, and faith in each other in this process. It's going to be one, I think, that's going to call, cause some concern, perhaps some anxiety, perhaps some um, difficulty in relationships, and also in making sure our community understands 
what we are trying to do and we understand what the community wants. Um, but I, I appreciated her way of ending what she had to say. And I can imagine that when we invite her to meet with the whole school committee, she will also say that again. So that was a quick way to go through those notes. And I just um, hope that if anybody else has anything that they'd like to follow up on, that you can be very confident that you can speak and um, we can listen to you at this point, but know that we have lots of time ahead of us to do these, these important tasks. Member Levy. So perhaps this is on the agenda, but um, I think in order for us to get a posting out by the first of the month, we've got to get moving on writing that. And um, this is where it gets tricky because in order for us to really mitigate bias, when we are screening candidates, we should be, um, we should be looking for criteria that we have already articulated in the job description. But if we are not doing a survey for a while of our, of our community about what they're looking for, then we can't have that transparency in the job description of what we're looking for in candidates. We can certainly interview for all of those criteria that we come up with in the survey. But I think I want us to be really thoughtful when we write the job description. Of course, we're going to be thoughtful, but be thoughtful of the fact that whatever we put in the job description is what candidates are going to base their materials on when they apply. And so we should try and be, obviously, I think there are people who thought our previous job description was too long. Mm -hmm. Without being too long, we should try and be as all-encompassing as possible, or at least as explicit as possible. And I'm just wondering timeline for writing and if we're going to post January 1st what's our timeline for writing the job description I would like to answer that I think January 1st is unrealistic at this point um, today is the 15th I don't know how much work can be done after this and I don't know what the structure for that kind of work can be um, and that is where I'm feel like I need to get some advice on that. Um, I just looked at the Dartmouth again. It looked like the applications closed. Let's see, it said screening would be set by February 13th, the screening committee. Um, so I, again, I don't know if I've communicated that we need it by January 1st. If I did, that was a mistake because I don't think we have the capacity to do the kind of posting that we want to do by by January 1st. That's just my thought. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm having a little frustration, not with anybody here, it's just frustration. Mm -hmm. That um, you know, we've known since July that we were going to be doing this. And I think we selected MASC back in October. And um, I guess I'm just wondering, I'm feeling a little bit like we are not really helping ourselves here with the fact that we are just having this conversation now and it's mid-December. So I want us to be thoughtful and I don't want us to rush, but I also do want us to move quickly. And mm -hmm. so, Again, I think it's a question for Liz of like, what is this timeline? What needs to happen when with the understanding that we don't want to be in a position where we're choosing from the leftovers because everybody else has already hired. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I know that we need to, you know, think about the timeline of, of like when we are meeting and when she's meeting with our, our school committee, but I really think that we need to meet with Liz soon, like in the next two weeks so that this can get moving. And again, if it's just the subcommittee, that's fine, but, so, but the work's gotta move forward. I just, excuse me, I just wanna interject. 
we don't have a seated subcommittee. Right. That's what I was so just going to say. We need to seat the subcommittee, um, you know, if we want to move some of these things forward. We can try to get a full committee meeting with um, Liz before then. But Gwen, I think I remember Liz saying that she's she's booked up until a certain place in, I don't know, remember where, mid-January or something like that. So we should check on that because she's got a couple of other searches going. And so it could be that she was booked through December or something like that. And she, she cautioned us that it was hard to make time with her. So we should- so I guess to that, then is Liz the person who should be working with us? If she's too busy for us, maybe we need somebody else from MASC. And I'm also confused about why we don't have a seated subcommittee. We, because the mayor has to seat the subcommittee. Okay, so is there a reason why she hasn't done that yet? Uh, I think, Gwen, did the applications have a deadline? Are you talking about, I think we're talking about two things. One is the search committee and one is the seated subcommittee. Is that right, Member Levy? Wait, wait, what's the difference? The, why, the, do we have, why would we have two search committees for this? I know. And that was a question. Do that. We have to have one search committee, but if you want to wait so that all members can weigh in before the mayor seats the subcommittee, we can we can do that. We just have to, if I'm going to be um, scheduling for a, another school committee meeting, we've got to know that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But we can't can't have two search committees for this, this superintendent search. That can't happen. No, I guess the question is, is there work for the school committee members to do on the subcommittee that maybe doesn't need to be done by the entire search committee? I don't know. I, I will say this, that anything the search committee does is going to be brought to the full committee, right? They're gonna be reporting all along the whole time. Right. And the, right. the full committee will weigh in on that. And, you know, maybe the search, com I don't know. I don't, no, I don't no, know. Sorry, I think we're getting our, our there's too many words here that mean the same things. There's members of the school committee on the search committee. Right. And that's a, a subset. That's not the whole school committee. There's, right. So is there work for the four of us to do that doesn't need to be done by the entire 15 people on the search committee? I'm sorry, who's the four of us? Margaret, Gwen, Meg, Dina. Okay, that's not a voted on subcommittee of the school committee. It has to be voted on by the school committee in order for any of you to post public meetings. That's why this had to be a full committee meeting because there is no such thing as the preliminary superintendent search committee. So it was only was on our agenda at our, or Gwen. That was the superintendent search committee. That was to expedite uh, the mayor being able to see a search committee. Okay. I. I was under the understanding that at our last meeting, those people were going to be moving this work forward. And I think one of the reasons why this is frustrating is that we need clarity in who is doing what and that gets decided at the meetings and that's gotta be on our agendas so that we can have the process move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can make a full committee meeting where we vote for a process like that. But I can't post a public meeting for a non-existent subcommittee. Right. And I think that's why Layla weighed in on this, because yeah, because I asked her, I said, can we have four members of the school committee doing some preliminary work? And she that's when she weighed in to say that that's not something that we could do. We'd have to post. Probably, she didn't actually say that we have to have a subcommittee voted on, but I guess that may be part of what she was referring to. That's how we, that's how we're able to do it. How about we go to Aileen, member Davis. Uh, this is just a short question, but maybe um, <clears throat> we're back to the survey and just questions about um, the distribution of the survey. Um, I know that we've kind of mentioned that multiple times about any survey, about making sure that it is widely distributed and how that's done. And does MASK facilitate that for us, with us? Um, yes. That that would be an important thing to know so that um, 
if we're saying that it's really important to hear from the community, then we have to get it out to everybody. Yeah. At least the opportunity. I mean, whether they answered or not, that's the part that we can't control. But if it gets to them, whether on paper or online in some fashion. Great, great question. Um, I did ask her who would be in charge of all of that. And she said that MASC would be, they would be doing it all. Member Robbins. Thank you. Um, I also feel an urgency about this because I do know that uh, there are a lot of districts that have already been advertising. They've, they've sort of seized the advantage of going on early. And um, we, if we're already having trouble rolling out the beginnings of this and even getting a committee, I'm very worried about us having a live vacancy notice and a description of what we're looking for available for people who are looking for the possibility of joining our community. And I, I wonder if in fact, uh, the mayor could task a couple of members of the school committee in thinking about creating what that um, brochure would be or what that advertisement would be in order to create at least drafts that were ready to commit to submit to a larger committee um, rather than doing that as um, as a larger committee that's assembled later on just to make, to be able to move that forward. I, we don't have a list of what the specific processes are about how we roll this out, which is what I'm missing. Um, and I agree with member Levy that if Liz's book is full, um, we need we needed somebody here tonight to help us with. And I'm sorry, Gwen, that you got landed with with a lot of questions without the concrete answers to it. And um, I would very much like to recommend that we go back to MASC and say, we wanna get this going. Um, we need your support and your advice. Um, if you can't meet with a whole school committee until a date that's later on, is there someone who could at least meet with this small group very, very soon to help answer these immediate questions and give us some guidance about how we get this going and get this posted? I would like to see you take a vote as a full committee on the on the adoption of the preliminary search committee. Because if Liz meets with just a few of you, it has to be a publicly posted meeting. And because there is not this search committee, it has to be a meeting of the full committee. So uh, if this is how you want to go forward, we should have a full committee meeting to take a vote like that. We have a meeting on Monday. You could add outside of executive session, you could add this to it. Yeah. So does that need to happen right now because it's 48 hours, 48 business hours ahead or because we already have an agenda, is it okay to add an agenda item? Uh, I think um, I can write to the mayor and ask her and okay. see if she's able to override the 48 hours. So let me do that right now. Thank you. It's pretty close to 48. It's actually, it has to be posted by 4.30 because that's when the city clerk's office. So we missed the 48 on this one, but she'll probably be able to override it. Let me find out. So thank you, member Levy. Am I unmuted? <laughs> yes, thank you. That was a brilliant idea. I forgot about the meeting on Monday. So I think that we add that to the agenda. We vote and have a preliminary meeting. In the meantime, I'm happy to write to Liz and say, reflect, what we talked about tonight and say that we're very anxious to get going on this if it's not possible for her to guide us before the middle of January that we need to explore the idea that there be somebody else from MASC to do that. I will do that um, straight away. And um, I really appreciate everybody's input. I, you know, I appreciate member Robin saying that you're sorry that I have to do this, but I, I think we're all feeling our way in this. And if anybody is more expert in it, I'm always open to ideas. Um, I was, you know, really find, find, following guidance from Liz LaFond, but I think that you're absolutely right, Member Levy, that we are in a situation of mid-December that we need to really get this moving as quickly as possible. I was heartened to hear from her that she has a couple of people who are very interested in Northampton and know that there is a posting coming. 
So that's the good news that um, we know that there are a couple of people interested, which is um, something that I think should give us some confidence that we will be able to attract some good candidates. Is there anybody else who has a comment or a question? A member Miller. My only question or additional comment for her would be that um, the question of whether it would be possible for a subset of the larger search committee to work on things like the rubric, um, because um, as a former member of the, or actually press, uh, member of the superintendent evaluation committee, I know that our work has in part been defining uh, the characteristics of a superintendent that we would be evaluating. And some of that really ties in with uh, what we're looking for in a, a permanent superintendent. So I wonder if a subset of the larger search committee might be able to do some of that work. Mm -hmm. it does seem to be a good role for the for that um, for the members of the subcommittee, uh, Member Robbins. Thank you for that, Margaret. And I, I'll build on it, saying that in my experience, the the process is a little bit reversed. That there is the subset of the school committee that works to do the preliminary work, and then it's opened up to the larger community about joining what would basically be. Um, implementing the results of a survey and then deciding what the rubric would be together and then deciding what the questions and um, interviewings would be with the pre-screening piece of it. Um, and then we may have jumped the gun a little bit about opening it up to the larger community, but if we're not going to contact the people who have already expressed their interest, um, I'm hoping we have a timeline of letting them know what our process is but also reserving the possibility dependent on what Liz's feedback is that we can do some of that other work um, a little bit more efficiently and faster and uh, include the larger group once we have that framework together and get their feedback. Well, to reassure you, I have responded to everybody who has written to ask to be on the committee and also Annie has as well to thank them for that and that, that we will be letting them know. We just, you know, we don't didn't have more information than that, but it, I, I'm hoping that everybody who did write to us did get a response. I'm pretty sure we paid attention to that. How many people yeah. are there? Sorry, can I just say, I, I, I don't know that folks who did respond would know that there isn't something happening next week or two weeks from now or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, if they have a sense of what the timeline is that we might not be getting back to them for several weeks, that might be a good sort of general open mailing. Mm -hmm. How many people? So far we have, I well, if I could stop sharing now and I can look. Because we've added a few today. Right. I think we're getting close to 19. I, you and I may not have the exact same, but. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that's without the members of the school committee. And is Zara the only student who's expressed interest thus far? So far, yep. Yeah. But we hope that others can come forward. I can um, reach can reach out to the associate to the associate principals at the high school to remind them that we need um, student participation at least one more. But again, you know, if we're getting up to twenty four or twenty five, I th that was something that Liz cautioned us for sure. I th I think we can winnow it. I don't think we need to accept everybody who volunteers. No. Um, on the other hand, I do, I, I'm concerned if we have just one person from this and one person from that, I mean, maybe that we just have to assure people that that's how we have to proceed with this. So they know who they're representing. 
I do think it's a little tricky that we, um, I think we need transparency in how we're selecting people. And we haven't asked them to tell us a whole lot, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because <laughs> we wanted to make it easy. So uh, yeah. I think we will have to have a conversation, and maybe that's right now, about how to select people, not necessarily who to select, but how to make the decision. Mm -hmm. um, certainly diverse representation in terms of, you know, the different areas that are represented and different voices and different perspectives yep. and identities. Well, I, I can say that because in our, our um, posting or whatever, the invitation, we did ask for people to say why. And I would say, with no exception, everyone did explain why they would be interested in being on it. Being on it. And I think you're absolutely right, Member Levy, that it's a, it's a real balancing act to try to figure out sort of an application process versus an invitation. and having somebody explain read I mean there are some that have given us their resumes and um, there are many others who probably don't have a resume or may not think of that as part of why they would want to be on the committee so it puts us in a position of judging I guess and that I, I think we have to be really careful So my thinking at this point is that I need to send the notes that I took to Liz. I need to tell her that we need to meet with her. We need to have meet, met with her yesterday or in October, but since we haven't, um, that we need to meet with her ASAP to find out a timeline and also then to, to find a way to have a subcommittee that is official so that we can proceed to develop the notice of vacancy, as well as a process for determining who should be seated on the committee. Does that sound like something that people would agree on? Aileen, I mean, Member Davis. Thank you, it's okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm editing myself as I'm thinking. I'm thinking I immediately shoot to the plan B for when she may be, this is my glass half empty mode at this hour of just thinking like, what happens if she says, I know, I know you really do need to get on it, but no one else is available. I just can't. Like I'm just picturing if 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 that was the initial response, not out of any bad anything, but if that was her initial response and didn't just say, you know, I'm just really swamped. I'm thinking that I should pass you along to blah blah other staff member. Like why wasn't that already suggested? So it just makes me wonder. Um, I think that we need to insist and that if she if she can't do it like a meeting meeting then something else she needs to recommend what can we do without her in the meantime like the uh, setting up the committee the creation of the rubric or the survey or the some advice on the phone, you know, things so that, so that the process can proceed maybe without, am I, I don't know if, am I making sense here? Like what actions can, can be taken if she says, um, the earliest I can get with this committee is whatever, January 20th or something that doesn't feel perfect to us. We're all, it sounds to me like we're all in agreement that let's get some tasks taken care of and maybe without her in person. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Member Miller. I think I'm echoing what you're saying, uh, Member Davis, but I, of course, in my typical confrontive way, um, would say that we are spending a lot of money 
to use this firm that we chose over other firms. So I think we deserve to not just ask, but insist that if she is not available, there needs to be somebody else for mask that is ready to help us right now. Mm -hmm. I will I'll say that. And um, are we spending? Huh? Are we spending a lot of money? Not a lot. Money. Um, I, I can't speak for Liz LaFlande right now. The impression I got, however, and maybe Annie can weigh in on that, is that she doesn't think we're behind at all. And now that's something that isn't going to necessarily sit well with you. Um, again, it's people, she's done this a lot. Um, and I think that was my first question when we met with her, is, is, are we way behind? And she said, absolutely not. So I have a feeling that she may answer, she will do it and she will do it in a way that she knows how she does it and has been successful at it. Um, but it may not match the need that some of us anyway have to get started yesterday. And, and I could be wrong about her scheduling. I, I, I don't remember exactly what she said about that. So yeah, I'm be, not sure. And I also want to remind you that Liz had a, a terrible accident about yeah. five weeks ago and she has now recovered from it. She ran over yeah. her foot with a lawnmower and it was very, very bad accident. Yeah. And so she's fine now. She was said she was able to wear shoes at her daughter's wedding the past weekend. So that's kind of maybe part of, you know, what she's just coming out of that again. Yeah. Uh, member Robbins. I totally respect um, Liz's feedback on that, but I have a hard time fitting it in with the reality of all these other districts that are advertising for superintendents and um, they're going to go, you know, they're going to, they're going to pick the people that really are rising to the top and seem to meet their needs. And it's not that the people who will be left are not going to be great candidates potentially, but I'm not sure why we would put ourselves in that position. We had said we were going to start this um, months ago. Then we expend, we extended it to looking at it in November. Um, we didn't have a concrete plan for how we were going to make that happen. And I, quite, quite personally, if I were a candidate looking for a job and the first good one that came along, I'd take it. And um, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for one that came down the pike that I might want, but wasn't yet advertised that I hoped I might get a couple of months later. So. Um, if MASC is doing superintendent searches in a lot of other districts, then I guess I would question why that's happening and that timeline and ours isn't happening in our timeline. And I'm just rooting for our district and I'm not pushing back against Liz's expertise, but it's just the pieces aren't fitting together for me. Okay, well, I will, um, again, I will write to her and talk about the urgency that we uh, expressed in our meeting tonight and um, the notes that I took on her notes. And Annie, have you heard from the mayor about putting it on the agenda? That we uh, yeah. have a vote to make a subcommittee to do a preliminary? Um, yep, I asked her to include it on the agenda for Monday night, a vote to um, create a preliminary, let's see, add a vote on Monday's agenda. Uh, to form a preliminary, preliminary superintendent search committee. So I haven't heard back from her. I know she's in a city council meeting right now. Right, okay. Oh, she. I just heard back from her. She said it's too late. It would have needed to have been added at 6.30. Um, so perhaps a special school committee meeting over the holidays. Could we... Um postpone our meeting until eight o'clock so that it's 48 hours ahead? Well, that, that would mean, uh, I think that we'd have to find, I don't know. I, I don't, um, well, I mean, I think that meeting starts at seven. I don't know, I'll write to her. Talk amongst yourselves while I do this. The meeting on Monday is just an executive session, correct? So.
if we had the executive session first and then we had a, a regular meeting after, and that would mean the time would be such that we could post it. Does that work? So you're suggesting like two separate, post it as if it's two separate meetings, like an executive session meeting and then an open meeting. Yeah. Right. And also, I think the mayor can make, um, or the chair can make contingency um, changes to the agenda if stuff comes up that's really important. I wonder how she's able to concentrate on this task whilst they're having a city. It has to be an emergency for her to override that, so. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that we can know whether this is going to be possible for Monday. And if it's not possible for Monday, how realistic is it to have a, a meeting during the week after the holiday that is celebrated by Christians um, until between that and the New Year's week? I don't. I don't see well, that as realistic. I, I would think that if we were going to have a meeting, it would be next next week. Like yeah. Tuesday or something like that. I'm You know, as hard as it is right now to schedule things like that, I think it does feel like we need to have this meeting in order to establish this subcommittee so that we can start doing this work, the notice of vacancy and this, this search committee. Do we want to do a Tuesday? It is Hanukkah. Do we want to do Tuesday the 20th? When Hanukkah starts Sunday night though, right? Well, yep. Well, it's day two of Hanukkah. And you're having a meeting on the first day of Hanukkah on Monday night. Yeah. Um, your call, I, I mean, I certainly can post a meeting tomorrow for Tuesday and Try to remember it will only be one agenda item, and if we could do the meeting a little earlier, it might be. I don't know. You guys will have to decide that. I mean, the meeting is just you're you're talking about the meeting just to create the subcommittee, right? So I wouldn't necessarily have to be there. No, there would have to be a quorum. There has to be a quorum, though. I mean, the reality I... is. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tina. Well, yeah, in order to do the work that is, uh, in order to do the work that we're talking about, it's really not going to get done between the 22nd and the 3rd, I'm guessing. Most people are going to meet on like the 27th or the 28th. But I don't know, maybe rushing this is silly because are we going to meet to do the work anyway? Yeah. We can meet as a full committee to do the work in the meantime. But if you meet as a full committee, you might as well take a vote. Right? Yeah. You know, I think it hinges on when Liz can come also. I mean, I know we need, we can do some work without Liz there. But Even we like need to establish the job description. Right. Yeah, we can do that. And well, the also the the posting, how we would want to post it. Can can I just share what it, Maura Healy has on her website about open meeting law, which is um, if a discussion topic is proposed after a meeting notice is posted and it was not reasonably anticipated by the chair more than 48 hours before the meeting. The public body should update its posting to provide the public with as much notice as possible of what subjects will be discussed during the meeting. Although a public body may consider a topic that was not listed in the meeting notice that notice it was not anticipated, the AG strongly encourages public bodies to postpone discussion. So they encourage us not to do that, but we are allowed to do it. I'm sure the mayor is aware of that. She definitely is aware of that. And it, yeah, I'm, I, I don't wanna argue with the mayor. It's definitely her call, she's the chair. Right, so. but I just want us to be aware that the law does allow her to make that call. If it's a simple vote over seating a meeting, it might be one she's willing to do. So it is, it is I'm reading directly from Maura Healy's website. 
I think that the mayor probably wants to just focus on the business at hand on Monday night. I would guess that's what she wants to do. So in either way, this is going to have to be a meeting of the full committee. So. Thank you for that, Annie, but can you please share that um, we'd love to have her clarification given the AG's um, writing on that and get her response from that? Well, I, I think that she is. She understands the reasonable anticipation part of it, of course, and she's probably weighing in on it now. I have a text in to her, so I'm sure she's in the, her other meeting. So we got. I'm sure. Have I'm sure she is too. But could you ask her just for us, um, given that there does seem to be a little wiggle room in that? Is that something she could possibly consider? I'm sure she is considering it. I just asked her if she would consider having two meetings or moving the meeting up to eight. So let's hear what she has to say about that before we recommend anything else. Could you just add that little piece to it? I'm sorry, just that little okay. next little piece. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Well, I'm conscious of the fact that we said this would be an hour and it's been an hour now. Um, I'm happy to communicate. <laughs> what did, what was that? Member Miller, did you have something you wanted to say? <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing. Are we surprised? No, I know. Not, not your fault, Gwen. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll take whatever blame I need to take. No, I no. Remember, no. remember I had that t-shirt that said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to make it again, that t-shirt. You know, can I just say, I mean, you can say you're sorry if you want to say you're sorry. I think that there's so the ins and outs of the rules are so complex and yeah. it's just like the learning curve. Every time I do anything, the school committee is just like, yeah, it's very you know, true. And I, think and I mean, even, even just this discussion, I was thinking that I was hearing that the mayor has to seat the committee and now I'm hearing it's two things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and, you know, the red tape makes, this is why people get frustrated with process, you know, the mayor because will have we have a task, you know, we have a task to do and we need to do it. Um, I'm trying to be reassured when, you know, you had said to me before, Member Agna, that you know that um, MASC reassured you that we're not late, and so I'm trying to be reassured by that. But I see the point that um, you know Member Robbins was saying. You know, if people got on it quicker, and that there are you know various districts that are looking for superintendents. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, um, preaching to the choir, but, um, it is, it's complicated and it's slow and to the I extent just, that we can do anything in the interim. I, I just want to add to that, yeah. you know, I've watched superintendents, I watched the former superintendent go through his got a job search and that was last spring. There was a lot of job searches out there then it, it's kind of a continual thing. I think it's better to do it at this time of the year so that we have a bigger pool, but you know, it can be successful at other times of the year as well. So I was just looking at what searches are actually on. And right now there are one, two, three, four searches posted on MASE. Um, I know that probably Dartmouth will be putting theirs up The mayor answered that she's in a meeting. I don't think she's interested in responding to us right now. Okay. Okay, I I have to decide to move this forward and say that I will assure you that I will write to Liz LaFond at MASC and share the notes from tonight and also describe the urgency on the part of some for posting and getting this going and wanting to have her come meet with the school committee to go over this 
the timeline. And um, we need to do this very soon. And we hope that she can be available to us to do that. I think we should schedule a special meeting since our next meeting has to do with school improvement plans and all the other things that are been pushed onto that one. Not that we want to have more meetings, but I would suggest that we do need to have a special meeting for this. A special meeting just to vote to seat this subcommittee? No, no, no. I'm talking about with with Liz to come and talk about what the process is. Got it. I wonder if you couldn't do both in that meeting. Uh, I mean, unless you decide not to have a preliminary, so I don't know. But I don't want to, I don't know how long that's going to take. And I do think right. once we have the subcommittee seated, we can at least start working on drafts of things. Mm-hmm. I, I apologize. I need to go. My kids' um, furnace is out. <laughs> I have to go run space heaters up over them. And I know you guys will carry on. Thank you for being here tonight. And well, I, I would entertain a, a motion to well, have end this meeting. Okay. okay. I guess what, I, and before we do that, Gwen, you're going to talk to Liz and then you'll call me. And because I'm trying to take some time off over the holiday. And if I'm going to um, post a meeting and put that together, I want to know as quickly as possible. I will right away. Well, you've, you've okay. have a little bit I, I, stuff to do tomorrow, but um. you have. A, I think I need to remind everybody that Gwen has a very big day tomorrow, <laughs> and um, she's going to be in the hospital and not able to do stuff. So um, maybe we should. I will. I, what I'll do is copy the mayor on the um, communication with Liz, and so that there can be another person who's part of the conversation with Liz. Okay, and then the mayor copy me on that, and the mayor and I can work on scheduling that meeting. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. A second. Okay, Thank you. Member Agna. Uh, yes, please. Member Miller. Yes. Member Davis. Yes. Member Levy. Yes. Member Robbins. Yes. And good luck tomorrow, Gwen. Thank you. Uh, Member Goldman. Yes. And Member Seraphie Cox, which I think uh, I'll just I see her there. Thank you all so much. And sorry that it, I, I won't say sorry one more time, but I, I do hope that this can be worked out in a, a smoother way. I appreciate your patience with it. Thank you. Yeah. We're with you for tomorrow, Gwen. Yeah. Well. Wow.